So this uh, instrument here is a water quality probe. It tells us about different properties of the water, like how much salt is in it. So we call that salinity. Um, how much colour or, or how green the water is. It's chlorophyll, so that's a pigment that algae make. And we're going to drop it down through the water column and it's going to tell us about how all, that, how all these uh, things or parameters change with depth. So I'll put it in now and take a measurement at the surface. Wait for it to stabilise. How's that looking, Ryan? Salinity is uh, 20.4. Yep. There's a bit of confusion about algae in the Gippsland lakes. Reports in recent years of blue-green algae have led people to believe that all algae is harmful, which isn't the case. In fact, much of the area's algae is essential to the well-being of the lakes and provides an important component in the food chain. And that means good fishing for the region's many visitors. But occasional blooms of toxic blue-green algae are an issue, threatening the health of the lakes and the people who swim in them, which in turn affects tourism, as the blooms typically occur during summer in wet years. Perrin Cook is a biogeochemist at Monash University. He and his colleague Ryan Woodland are undertaking long-term monitoring of the lake's water quality to see if blooms are likely, as well as keeping an eye on the algal species themselves. Yeah, we're stabilised. So how do you reckon the Gippsland Lakes compare to the um, other estuaries we've been looking at? Say in terms of um, productivity and uh, water clarity, seagrass habitat, I'd say it's in really good condition. Yeah. Critical to their work is an understanding of the way the water in the lakes is layered. Fresh water from the catchment area sitting on top of salt water from the open ocean. If you imagine you have an aquarium and you put a lid on the aquarium, the surface layer acts like that lid and the bottom layer loses all its oxygen. Fish need oxygen. Now, in the Gippsland Lakes it's so large they can, they can avoid that, that deoxygenated layer. So it's not really a problem for fish, but, but the main problem that it causes is that it allows nutrients to be released from the sediment. And it's that release of nutrients which is what then feeds the blooms in the summer period. It's in early winter that the stage is set for summer algal blooms, so monitoring continues through winter into spring to see if conditions are conducive to blooms. The type of algae that grow in the lakes are, um, they like fresh water. Well, one potential way of reducing the risk of blooms is increasing the salinity of the lakes. Now that's effectively what we did when we opened the entrance. Prior to the opening of the entrance, there was actually more of these blue-green algal blooms than there are now. And the reason for that is that more, more salt water has been let in. So, so in, in one sense, that's actually been beneficial to the lakes because it's reduced these, these algal blooms. But on the other hand, it's had negative effects as well. For example, um, fringing vegetation, uh, tea tree, like you can see around us, that's, that's begun to die off because the salinity has increased in the lake. Even though the entrance was open over 100 years ago, the effects of that opening are still being felt as it ripples its way through the lakes. So this is just a, uh, it's a little contour camera. Yeah. And uh, it, what it does is it takes some high definition video images. Yeah. Or it can take the uh, Gippsland Lakes is an amazingly productive system. There's um, commercially fished species of um, a brim, there's, uh, there's mullet, there's flathead, there's uh, any number of species. It's a very productive system. So the fish themselves can um, osmoregulate. They can, um, that, that basically just means that they can control uh, the amount of salt in their body relative to how much is um, in the water around them. Ryan, who hails from the USA, is a convert to the beauty and diversity of the Gippsland Lakes. Recreational fishermen, uh, casual, casual tourists, anybody who comes to use the Gippsland Lakes uh, for fishing or even for uh, boating or recreation can really help uh, the fish populations and the fish community in the lakes. And one of the main ways they can do this is by following the regulations, the fisheries regulations that are laid out each year. You know, main, uh, sticking to the size limits, sticking to the catch limits, and really um, harvesting only as much as, um, as they're allowed to. And that really, um, that will let the uh, fisheries managers manage the populations as well as they can. 